Yo, what is up, guys? So for today, we're going to be going through the TWAB for this week. I think there's a few important things that I want to note on this TWAB is like economy changes, materials, uh, stuff that's going to be really impactful in the next uh, expansion. And another one, which is Bright Dust. It's uh, changing and they explained further what it is that it, there are going to change. And there's some good and bad. Uh, we obviously still don't know. So from what I have seen... I don't like some of the changes, but I do like some other ones. So let's start off with the economy changes. So currencies and items have changes coming either at the end of this of this season or in the near future. Here's what to expect when you log in next season. Materials with no home. With several destinations going into the Destiny Content Vault, many of you have been wondering what is going to happen to the currencies found in the areas currently underneath the, py the pyramids. The simple answer is that there is no changes to these currencies in Season of the Hunt. You'll be able to continue to spend them at vendors normally. Starting in Season 13, Phase Glass, Needles, Alkine Dust, Simulation Seeds, and Seraphite will no longer be accepted by vendors for those of you that still have the unspent stockpile at the end of Season of the Hunt. Spider will be kind enough to offer a small glimmer exchange to take them off your hands, but you'll realize the best value by spending them before that point. So make sure you turn your stockpiles before the end of the season. Essentially, uh, all of the materials from like Titan, Mercury, uh, Mars. I'm missing one more. I'm pretty sure I'm missing one more. Let me see. Io. Yeah, all of those planets just go to sp spend them all on um on spider right now before the season ends because you'll get uh legendary shards or whatever you want like glimmer legendary shards i'd highly recommend uh legendary shards for what they're announcing later so the, the other thing that they're changing and not changing but they're taking away from you is if you have like faction tokens still or ramen co uh, coupons uh then like stuff that are useless and really don't have any purpose in the game i hold my ramen cop coupon because it's it's something from Cade. unfortunately they're just gonna take it away from us so see it as you will i i'm kind of sad they're taking away my expired ramen coupon just because when i see it it reminds me of Cade. but i mean whatever fuck Cade, right <laughs> so bounties back in late april we shared some plans on how to tackle the problem of bounty fatigue we have made some shifts to seasonal bounties and reduce their importance on earning seasonal currency and seasonal progress. We're happy with these changes, but still want to cont continue to improve the bounty system overall. One of the plans we, pre we uh, previewed was to eventually replace weekly bounties with a new mechanism to provide players with a set of non-expiring and account scoped objectives each week that will grant lots of season rank progress. We're still working on that system and we'll share more on it before it targeted before its targeted release of season 13 season pass so before i start talking about the season pass i want to talk about the bounties real quick because right now currently without doing any of the like just doing weeklies not none of the repeatables you get around 3600 on all three characters because obviously uh each of the like crucible gambit and uh what's it called Vanguard, they all give you weekly uh, weekly bounties that are 200 bright dust each. Uh, multiplied, that's obviously 3,500 or 3,600. That's not inc including uh, the repeatables. I do like five repeatables when I'm doing the weeklies, might as well, which gives me like an extra 150. So like, what is it? Uh, 450 extra bright dust. So that's just something I do. <coughs> Does that mean that with this new like weekly mechanism that they're trying to do, does that mean that we can't get 3,600 anymore from just base weekly uh, brightest intake? Like what? Like what's happening? Like I really want to know. Like oh, like that doesn't change at all. You just have to complete the weekly like mechanism now because it sounds so like so vague, and that's what I hate about it is because. I don't trust Bungie to fix it in a way where it betters us and it just betters them overall. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to do something fucked up like, oh, they're going to destroy like half our our chances to get Bright Dust, even though I know some people are going to be like, read the next one, which still doesn't help. But let's go on with the season pass. So the season pass, you'll be, you've come to know 
Blech. The season pass you've come to know since Shadowkeep is largely staying the same. There will be new weapons and armor to earn off both the free track and own path. One big chance change we're making is adding Bright Dust to the season pass. There's already uh, Bright Dust in the season pass, but they're adding a lot more, I guess is what they're trying to say. Oh, shit. Huh. Okay, I... We wanted to change the way you earn Bright Dust and move for move towards account specific paths to give players with only one character significantly more Bright Dust than than they've been earning over the last year. Here's the high level high level look at the changes coming next season. Season Pass Free Path will now offer 7,500 Bright Dust. Season Pass Owned Path will now offer 3,000 3,000 Bright Dust. Weekly Bounties will now award 100 Bright Dust. With these changes, the vast majority of players will be earning, earning more Bright Dust than before. One of our goals here is to not have a system that pushes you to try to grind out every week weekly bounty on all three characters every single week. Whether you are a three character player or a one play, a hunter, one player hunter, I guess it says, Bright Dust will be more available when earning ranks on Season Pass. We will, we will also be making change to the timing of Season Pass rank purchases, which will be available starting in week five instead of week nine. We have more plans to improve how you earn Bright Dust coming in Season 13 and we'll continue to monitor, monitor your feedback. So, <laughs> so weekly bounties just give us 100 Bright Dust now, which is... <sighs> 600, so 612. So 100 or 1,800 is what we're losing. That's essentially what you get with... 100 bright this so we'll be only getting 1800 a week if my math is correct yeah uh that's oh my god and i know people are going to be like bo you're or you're you're going to be earning more bright dust through the season pass because obviously i have the owned path so i guess i'll be getting what an extra 10,500 bright dust which sounds cool but you gotta remember that in a week I already make like roughly almost 400 bright or 4,000 bright dust. So this is like a one-time thing, unless like the season pass re loops and you get to earn bright dust again, then I guess there's added value to people like me who play a lot. But this just screams like we're making it easier for casual, play casual people to get more bright dust, but we're also nerfing the people who actually do three, three player uh, stuff heavily and it's like so now i just don't even have to play that much to get bright dust which is cool i guess but like it just means that i can't get as much bright dust as i used to be able to and i know people are going to be like well there's the repeatable bounties you can you can farm those those are so cost like they're not cost efficient they're not time efficient they're just overall dog shit because it's oh my god dude like if i had time to explain that i would but i I don't unfortunately and even if i did it's like i don't have to explain it to you hopefully you're smart enough to realize that doing repeatable bounties for gambit vanguard and crucible are horrible unless you're doing a weekly a weekly is like something okay well i'm doing a weekly so it'll give me that big chunk but you're only getting you can only hold 500 repeatable or five repeatables for each of the the play modes so essentially 15 that's only 150 bright dust for 150 bright dust not on top i'm not even talking about the cost for like the the uh the glimmer that alone is just like not even worth it like dude this this one change alone has already got me mad like the fact that i won't be able to earn as much bright dust as i am now because they want to make it easy for casual people and i can i can see people saying no they want to just make it so you don't have to play with three characters I don't have to do that already like i don't have to do that now i like there's nothing forcing me to do that now i do it because i want more bright this so that's an, a weak argument oh okay so spiders dealings spider is going through some changes in beyond light though in it honestly like all this is saying is that they're changing you can't buy legendary shards anymore which is fair because who the fuck buys legendary shards from spider 
And they're changing that to enhancement prisms. You can buy enhancement prisms from Spider now. Do I think they're worth it? Fuck, no, they're not. They're 400 legendary bright or legendary shards. That's hella not worth it. Especially since you can just go to, oh, I don't know, the gunsmith and just buy a bunch from him. His is way more cost friendly like 400 legend <laughs> legendary shards is for one for one enhancement prism if it was like 10 i'd be like that's a pretty cool good deal in my opinion this is just like oh if you have like 50,000 legendary shards yeah i guess this won't hurt you but it just feels so weird when they do a change like or changing brightness to make it easier for people with one one uh that only plays one pl one person to to get more bright this but then we go down here it's like oh yeah but this is cost 400 legendary shards it's like that's so weird like what uh and you can only buy three a week so that's what 1200 legendary shards for just three prisms i i i don't know man i i don't unless like i said unless they're like bundled in like a lot like let's say they're actually 10 so if you buy three, you're actually getting 30. I guess, sure. But me, I think this is dog shit. And then the other one is, uh, they're taking another look at enhancement cores and changing the price. So he, he can only sell five enhancement cores a day, but they're all gonna cost 30 each. So instead of destroying like 310 for five, you're only killing 150, which saves a lot of legendary shards in the long run, but who buys who who buys that like i i don't know anyone who buys those because I, like, me personally like at least speaking from experience i have a lot of enhancement cores i don't really care about like running out of enhancement cores considering they're really easy to farm because you like once you get an enhancement core what is it no once you destroy some legend le like legendary weapons you get a chance to get the enhancement core farm um uh, Thing. I forget what it's called, but I have like like a hundred of those. I I don't know. This this for me is just like cool, I guess, for people who wanted that. I don't know. I don't really care for it to be quite honest. And then go to our got to go fast. Essentially, this just says that the transmat preloader, the one that makes your sparrow go faster, the perk, it just means that all of the sparrows inherently have that already. So you don't have to worry about your your favorite sparrow not having that it already has it uh because people were asking about the ghost mod the speed demon if we would have to we would have to use that and they just decided to just put it on all the sparrows which is cool i guess i i i would love to see a sparrow rework just because sparrows are kind of useless i would love to see sparrows hold a little bit more importance uh or do it like in like or in world of warcraft have different speeds that you can buy or upgrade and then like actually make sparrows cool and different and unique because every sparrow kind of looks like the same sparrow and what i mean by that it's like dude like do new designs like the sparrow like the basic bitch of how the form looks you can see it in a bunch of even exotics i would love to see like different versions like maybe you give us like they've done mortal cycles awesome let's see more of that i would love to see just them become a true like cosmetic that people are like let me see your, your sparrow and let me judge you from that you know because i've never asked anyone like oh what's your sparrow because it's just so unimportant so that that's my thought on that eververse starting in season of the hunt bright engrams will now contain all eververse content from season one to three seasons prior to the current season excluding content for special events obviously here's some pr some practical examples season 12 bright engrams contain all content from seasons one through nine so that's pretty cool uh i'm not gonna lie that's pretty cool uh if you guys don't know actually like my only gripe is can i have can I get like, well, no, we, we already know that we can because we can get it from past seasons. But this essentially means that all of the bright engrams that we've had from Destiny Vanilla, for de uh, Vanilla Destiny 2 to wherever you are. So right now, like in season 12, for example, Vanilla Destiny 2 bright engrams all the way up to Shadow Keep. So if you didn't get something in Shadow Keep, you have a chance to get it now. 
My only concern is that this like bloats the pool even more. Usually, what was it? Two to three seasons is in a bright dust. Now it's gonna be one through nine. The only argument I can see people telling me is that, well, I mean, you have access to seasons one through wherever you are all the time and it just incrementally goes up by one so after a certain time of playing you will be able to get everything the only thing i would hope is if they give us some sort of like duplication like uh protection so let's see as always as always as you open more bright does your chances of earning things you don't own increases increases there will be instances of duplicate drops but the end will be weighted to grant you things you might be hunting so that's the thing like that like i get that they say that but i still don't trust them i would love to see like some sort of uh some sort of thing where we basically go into the brightness menu and then we click on some of the things we like we really want and then it giving us and like it saying like oh you get a 10 percent chance of getting that now or so on and so forth or what even what would be even cooler is like in the start of each season you have like each each of the menus has like okay you have a chance to get two of the ghosts two of the sparrows and then like four of the exotic um ornaments and the uh excuse me the exotic ornaments weapons and armor separately so four of each because we have a lot of those if you guys don't know so i would love to see like us like us get the opportunity to get to get that because then at that point we'll be able to do like a bunch of stuff like we'll be able to actually not only be excited for each of the bright dusts but we'll actually be able to choose what we want from them as well like there's a few things i didn't get in literally insert season here there's i haven't i didn't get everything from shadow keep i didn't get everything from opulence and or season of the drifter i would love to get those items and this would be a great opportunity to be like all right in the season pass there's a multiplier that goes up by two and it goes up to 20 percent so essentially the the first engram you get it's it tells you what are the what are the items you want and from there you pick and choose like okay i want this ghost i want this ghost i want that sparrow that sparrow and then from the exotic and or the exotic uh, ornaments from weapons and armor separately i would like to get the insert weapon here like two weapons and then two of the armors and then that's it and then maybe like oh what shader would i like to see more often there you go i don't know it would be so cool if you could customize bright engrams to that point because then at that point dude like you're literally you're always farm you're always going for something in the bright engrams and it loses that like level of rng because 20 percent at that point you're it's pretty that's a pretty good chance in my opinion i would love to see the numbers for like the bright engrams but for me 20 percent 20 percent would like really alleviate like my my FOMO or even 50% at that point, whatever, like whatever percentage Bungie feels comfortable with, I'd be like, all right, cool. Like I'm going to have to stop. I like, I don't have to work. I don't have to worry anymore because I'll get it eventually. I just have to play the game. So that's really the only Eververse piece that I really wanted to talk about. So that's pretty much it. Everything else is literally just like, oh, what like stuff in the future, title and seals that are going away, stuff like that. That's really like the only thing I wanted to talk about because everything else is like really just whatever is like they do show us the where is it progression changes we they give us the soft cap and the pinnacle cap so if you wanted to know the soft cap is 12 1200 uh, the hard cap is 1250 and the pinnacle cap is 1260 so not surprised there at all uh they always do that so yeah that's why i really didn't care for it too much the way that we get powerful rewards is changing as well so that's cool they're adding more sources one thing that kind of surprised me is that they're basically reducing the way that you can level and i mean this in like the most like casual way like i don't have any feeling towards this i think it's gonna dilute the or not dilute but it's gonna really show you how annoying leveling is without this because if you guys didn't know you could actually level through 
you could you could level your light through buying engrams from a certain person in the tower and from there you would level up like each piece one by one and then through your collections you would be able to level up something else they're actually taking the way that up that way so that's really unfortunate because now it means that you really have to have your your rng on point unless they have some sort of menageries type thing where you can choose which uh piece you get which is great because i think rng is dog shit uh in any game really i hate it in wow just as much as i hate it in destiny 2 i think it's just dumb so if you could pick and choose like all right i want this armor for this activity then at that point you are able to do the content that you actually want instead of just oh, another week of just grinding so i so i can get some like a heavy weapon even though garden didn't have a heavy weapon so it's like okay cool like fuck my life so that's really it uh the key points i wanted to point out was the fact that we are losing essentially uh, a lot of bright dust we're losing a lot of bright dust so i would suggest you these last two weeks make it worth it because what kills me the most too is that it's like we're losing all of this bright dust buying power yet the prices are probably going to be the same and it's like it's it's oh my god it just makes me laugh because it's like isn't that just how like america is right now like we don't have any buying power but everything keeps going up you know <laughs> so <laughs> let me know what you guys thoughts in the comments below i personally don't like this change i think it's a little a little fucked up in my opinion but what the fuck do i know i'm just a entitled asshole apparently let me know in the your, in the comments below what you guys think if you guys want to follow me on my social media all its links are in the description below thank you everyone for the support i really do appreciate it and other than that i will see you guys later